Welcome, everyone. We are back at the IRF World Championships of Racquetball. This is the last men's singles semifinal. We already know that Rodrigo Montoya from Mexico defeated David Horn. And we'll be moving on to the finals tomorrow. Now, will he play Charlie Pratt from USA, who's in the front of the court in blue? Or he will he be taking on Sebastian Franco from Colombia in the back of the court? I'm Laura McCormick. And I'll be joined by Gus Farrell on this match. Nope, I'll be joined by Timothy Baghurst. Here we go. Charlie Pratt will start off serving. It's 0-0 in game one. Both players playing very close to each other. Terrific shooting from Franco. Little fist pump. Don't see that very often, Laura, especially in the first rally. Starting it off strong. We could take a look back here at the replay. Flying effort from Charlie Pratt. He's played very well this week. I don't think he's had a tiebreaker yet. Franco had one yesterday against De La Rosa. He won 11-10. This is going to be a very interesting match. I really like Pratt's backhand. It's very smooth. With Franco, you'll see a bit of everything. He's quick, he's powerful. He has a nice touch, loves the pinches. Pratt. One of the things I noticed and, and actually advised players, Pratt was practicing his drive serve during the five minute warm up. A lot of players don't actually yeah. practice their serve and it's the, arguably one of the two most important shots in racquetball. Serve I've, and serve return. I've seen some players on the Pro Tour starting to do that as well. I've noticed like Jake Bredenbeck doing it. And I think it is so valuable to really warm that up. It is one of the most controllable aspects that you have, right? It's like a foul shot in basketball. You have to be able to get that in and serve with accuracy. Every court is different. Every floor is different. And so it gives you just a few opportunities to, to get that dialed in before you start the match. Great defense from the American. Wow, great pickup from Franco. What a rally. Terrific shot from Franco down the right side. Two bounces before the back wall. we we'll take a look back. We have a two-part replay here. See if we can squeeze them in before these guys start serving. Pratt just does a really good job moving around the court. He looks like he's so light on his feet the way he gets to each ball. Yeah, he's very well balanced, has good footwork, makes very few mistakes, is very difficult to beat. And we saw why he was in a final last year on this court at the Pan Am Championships. And there's an example. He just took a little pace off the ball. Side out 2-0. Franco has played a lot of matches this week. He's played doubles as well with Colombian partner Mercado. They lost yesterday to the USA in two straight. USA will face Canada later this afternoon. I think that skipped. Well, our referee good. says it's good. Our referee is Jaime Martel from Mexico. That he puts has, sorry, he has mm -hmm. the opportunity to appeal three appeals. He elects not to. That might have been worth one.
Charlie Pratt will get a second serve. He's leading right now 3-0 in game one. Set up for Pratt. Wow. Both players hitting some sidewalls until Pratt shows what a down the line should look like. That was beautiful. Suddenly 4-0 in favor of the American. Franco is supported by head coach Juan Manuel Gutierrez. That'll be a replay. Franco looking for the avoidable hinder, won't get it. Fellow Colombian Cristina Amaya and Adriana Riveros are down in the front. They're playing in a doubles match later this afternoon in another semifinal. Some good performances from the Colombians in this tournament. Also seeing some excellent performances from Mexico, as we expect, from defending their title from two years ago. Bolivia and Canada round out the semifinalists. Should also mention Guatemala, who Martinez will be in the final tomorrow against Longoria. They are playing Guatemala uh, doubles against Bolivia this afternoon. We should have that match streamed for you. Yeah, we'll be streaming all the finals tomorrow. That is the big, big dance right there Friday on Saturday, where we go through all of the finals and now I mean we've seen some tough matches between the quarters yesterday a couple tiebreakers today some really long matches we can expect it to be even more intense tomorrow for the final and it's a bit flat right now in this court you feel like the air has just been sucked out of it after that two hour marathon we just had Franco needs some good shots here to get in this match. He's down 6-0 already. He's going to take his first time out. Probably wise. Pratt started playing very consistently, very clean. I mentioned he's, he's very difficult to beat. Athletic, gets balls back, hits smart shots. Good start from the American. I can't, Tim. You know, I have to try to give you a hard time and throw some elements your way, too. But I just know we, I've heard it, I've gotten always. this criticism before, so I'm going to pass it along. We are all American on the continent of America, <laughs> stretching from north, central, depending on what you learned in school, and south. She and says I to just Tim give Backer you from England. <laughs> from England. I got you back, Laura. It's just a funny criticism that I've received a lot of times before, especially traveling around with some of these pros. Um, so I had to throw that out too, because we're having fun here. We are. We hope you're enjoying this stream. We've been here all week. We've covered so many matches. Of course, we'll have those on our YouTube channel after this tournament. Go to International Racquetball uh, Federation on YouTube and be sure to subscribe because then you'll get notified when we upload videos. Yeah, and you know what I do as well. For those of you who are watching on Facebook, I sign up for notifications so that every time we go live with the IRF, it's really easy for me to just click and go right immediately to the new feed. And we do start a new feed for each and every match. Side out for Sebastian Franco. He took out some big hitters here in the racquetball world he took out carlos keller from bolivia and he also defeated daniel de la rosa from mexico he's here now in the semi-final looking to go all the way look at that serve an ace serve for franco to get his first point that's nice he really needed that just to settle down just to get some momentum He's been at this level for many years. Long footing Pratt, but that should be an avoidable hinder. I think it's a good call. We'll see Franco appeal this. Wow, I'm surprised, Laura, by that decision. Franco didn't jump very high. 
replay. That's the value of appeals. I also like how he appealed. He didn't get dramatic. He didn't throw a foot. He just said, no, I'd like to appeal that. Oh, he read it, but he was just a step behind that. That'll put Franco now at 2-6. Pratt won in two straight games yesterday against longtime Canadian Samuel Murray. Samuel Murray was a semifinalist two years ago. Pratt also the head coach of the U.S. junior team. So we'll see right. him at the juniors supporting a large group of Americans along with a large group of many other countries. Juniors, I think you and I both agree, is, is one of our favorite events. It's the most fun of an international event. Wow. Franco looking really solid right now. We've really seen a maturity develop through his game as he's really been dedicated to playing the Pro Tours. Um, and he's really showing that, especially by coming here and being in a semifinal at the World Championships. Oh. Oh, it was short. I thought it was good. So did Franco. Be a second serve, though. He can appeal. He's got three. Plenty of Americans down to our right. Head coach is Dave Ellis. Sitting next to him is Bobby Horn, who was on this court just a few minutes ago. Franco sticking with the drive serve. bounces. Self-called by Pratt, who stops. It's great, a little touch of the racket. A lot of respect between these two players. Both of them really just get on and play, and, and it's great to see, and it's a great testament to the sport. No that, drama, we just compete hard. That's one thing that I do really enjoy, especially about watching Pratt. He is someone who I did get to watch last year at the Pan American Racquetball Championships here in Columbia on this court. But he is a very respectful player. I like when players are honest enough to call something on themselves. Great defense from Franco on his knees. Oh, that ball so low from Pratt for the side out. And Franco had the opportunity, but it hit the sidewall, came back to the middle. The Americans showed him how to do it. But this is better from Franco. This is what he needed to get into this first game. Took the timeout at 6-0. He's won four points since. Skip from Pratt was up there. Tried to guide it into the front wall. Laura, I first met Franco in 2012 at the World Championships in the Dominican Republic. I had the pleasure of refereeing one of his matches, and uh, he really impressed me with his composure and the way he played. And I remember going off that court after, of course, he'd won, going to see the tournament director, Gary Mazaroff, and I told him, Gary, I think, this, I think this guy has the potential to be a world champion one day. Two years later, of course, he wins the world championships in doubles, and now he's looking to win it in singles. Second serve for Charlie Pratt. Smooth. Oh. I mentioned the backhand. It's like he had all the time in the world on that setup, too. You could just feel it. Waited for it to come down, and that was just textbook. Nice wide angle pass from Charlie Pratt to put him at 8-4. He looks really calm and in control right now. He really does, and this is a big moment. It's the semifinal of a World Championships. 
but this is the way he plays. We saw it last year at the Pan Am Championships. He's a great competitor, gives everything, and is very difficult to beat because he doesn't make many mistakes. That's terrific from Franco. Yeah, Look really he smart. Turned his body round and ripped the forehand pinch winner. New Pratt was behind him. Great decision. Oh, he didn't get it though. Still, you have to admire the commitment. This is a semifinal. Players are representing their country. There's a team title at stake. We mentioned how Mexico are trying to defend their title in men's singles, women's singles, and, or excuse me, men's events, women's events, and a combined event. So this is big for the U.S. They need to get into that final. Montoya is already there for Mexico, and it could create some interesting perspectives because USA and Mexico are both still in men's doubles. Great hands from Franco. God is set up. Good read from Pratt. Oh, great pickup again from the Colombian. What a rally. Oh, no he way. gets it. Oh, that's great from Pratt who kept oh his composure. Oh my gosh. A tap from Pratt from, for that effort from Franco. Great rally. And Pratt does a really good job of trying to read what Franco's going to do. We saw him pick up that pinch in the front of the court. Look at that. And both players just really sticking with it. That was a fun rally to watch. Yeah, these two showing us some high quality racquetball. Haven't seen many errors, skips, you know, just right, missed opportunities. Right, they're winning on clean shots. Yeah. On the women's side in the team event, I think it may come down to Mexico or Guatemala. Longoria in the final against Martinez. And in doubles, both of them still in it. They'll be playing their semifinals later today. Mexico face Colombia, Guatemala, Bolivia. Great pickup again, Franco. But again, Pratt demonstrating the confidence he has in his backhand. And maybe a little bit of more maturity too, right? Um, I think we see that from some of these more experienced players where they just have so much more patience and it's a little bit of that confidence too. Seems like Pratt is just really in control, knows himself really well. When he gets a good serve and he knows that he's getting what he wants, he's getting the setup that he's looking for. Nice reach from Sebastian Franco. Side out for Colombia. Franco has played a lot of racquetball this week. He's been in singles and doubles. Colombia were defeated yesterday. That was a tough match against the USA. USA. And also he had that tiebreaker win earlier in the day. So it's the importance of nutrition, hydration, rest, so vital to do this day after day. And it's, it's a different environment. It's hard to explain if you're not here. It wears on you. Just the constant time spent at the club and the waiting for your next match. It's not a weekend event where you're playing four or five matches and just everything's just going by so quickly. It's true, but I think that these athletes, and especially with the support team that we've talked about that they come with, they do a really good job of staying fresh, making sure that you know they're able to get out and clear their heads and they're not just kind of wasting their time here at the court. You also see, you know, Paola Longoria, who's in the final, you'll find her here every night coming back to the courts with her yep. coach, Fran Davis, and mm -hmm. she is just out there. She keeps hitting balls. She keeps moving. So it is interesting the different styles of each team, each individual, and how they stay fresh for an event like this.
Pratt again winning points on his backhand side. 10 serving five. Columbia Fun. with a timeout remaining. Sorry, Laura. Oh, no. I just had a silly fact I was going to share. Fun fact about Charlie Pratt. He's also one of our vegan athletes that's here. Um, I know there's a couple other athletes like Maria Renee um, from Guatemala. Guatemala. She's also a vegan athlete. And so it's just one of those things. Um, you know, I think he takes a lot of controversy for it, too. But you see how light and fit he is. Franco does hit a backhand serve. From this position, he can hit a Z cross court and down the line. Again, trying to find something that will give him an edge in these rallies. Pratt went for too much that time. It was close, but a point for Franco. Better from Franco. Couple of points for him. Some applause from the Colombians down to my left. Plenty of players watching in attendance, not in the tournament anymore. From all across the world. So much fun to see so many different cultures coming together. I love it, and I love the friendships that are made at events like this. And I also love to see all the different jerseys and the different team camaraderie here. Yeah, we see teams swapping jerseys. We've seen a lot of cheering for you know, even a, a player who's not from that country. And we, we see friendships develop. It's, it's really great to see. Pratt again on that backhand. Got it, no way. And again, oh no, he wants a screen. So I think that this is sort of what we had seen in the Horn and Montoya, Max. He's looking for that avoidable hinder with the player on the floor. He literally had to leap over Franco. Well, you have to say, did he leap over him or did he leap behind him? It's so hard to judge. And these officials are so, uh, they have to make instant decisions. It's very difficult, our official Martel from, in fact, it's an all Mexican contingent. We will have an appeal. And Martel is asking, what exactly are you appealing? You can't just, I appeal I didn't win the rally, right? You have to specify. You gotta know what you're appealing. You can't just throw a hand up. I think we might see this overturned. Oh, it was close. One disagreed, one agreed. Eleni Guzman over on the left. Alejandro Morales on the right, official. Our main official, Jaime Martel, all from Mexico. The courts here in Costa Rica at the San Jose Indoor Club are concrete. I saw somebody asking about that. And it is pretty fast. We are at a higher altitude, too. And then you throw in that gearbox black ball. So still some discussion out on the court looking at whether that was a point or not. That is a point. So we're having, we're, having, not go. <laughs> we're having an argument about who was serving. Was it a point or wasn't it? It looks like we're playing the replay here. Charlie Pratt served, so that should not be a point. Plenty of drama again here at the IRF. Pratt is explaining where he served. It should it's be 7-10, but a point was given to Columbia. 
I wonder if this is a case where we could say we have the replay. Okay, no, we, no, we can't because we're not allowed to be involved. But what the but player could do. we have proof. Oh, no, okay, they did say it was his. There's no point. Yeah, but let me explain okay, why. Okay, go. Um, this is why we have an appeal system. Pratt, Pratt appealed the point given to Franco. Both line judges overturned it. And so here we go, the value value of, of line judges because it overturned it. If we had, don't have the line judges, suddenly there's drama, right? Because Franco got a point and you can't do anything about it. Here we got the call right. That's why we have line judges. And let's continue. Seven serving ten. Fun to see coaches and players looking up here to find out what we think. Franco, great stealing ball. One or two bounces, he won't get it. Snap of the wrist, oh, great pickup, Pratt. Oh no, Franco. You felt maybe he was just put off by Pratt getting in, jumping across the front. Knew what he had to do and just missed it. Some great reaching from both players. They're hitting so hard and so fast. Seeing some quality racquetball right now. Hope you're enjoying it wherever you're watching. Been looking at the chat, seeing where you're all signing in from. So excited to be able to provide this coverage around the world. Great serve from Pratt, gets the set up. Oh. Franco Sebastian with the defense. Oh, that's too good. I mentioned the backhand, and I'll continue to mention it. It's so smooth, so consistent. He makes very few errors on that side. This Brings is something us to 11-7, go ahead, Tim. I was just saying it's something that players can do is scout out their opponents, you know. I know this from watching Pratt play, and he played here last year, was on our show court a couple of times. Players can go back and watch that and kind of get a feel of how do I defeat this person? Is there a serve they don't like? Uh, do they have one side they hit better oh, on than the other? Such a clean down the line from Franco for the side out. Yeah, and I think there, there really is a value in going back through some of those tapes and really studying your opponent. You can do that all, even if you're not one of these players, by going to International Racquetball on YouTube. Wow. Diving get from Pratt. Franco. Oh. From Pratt, but just not quite there. A little emotion from Franco. Yeah, we're starting to hear a little more and more from Franco as he puts himself now at 8-11 in game one. These guys are fighting for a spot in the finals. We already know that Rodrigo Montoya from Mexico defeated David Horn from USA in the match previous to this. Therefore, Rodrigo Montoya is already a finalist. He will be playing tomorrow, and he's waiting to see who he plays. Will it be Charlie Pratt? Will it be Sebastian Franco? Leave your comments in the chat box. Let us know who you think will be in the finals tomorrow. Our women's finals are also set. Paolo Longoria will play Gabby Martinez. That'll be Mexico versus Guatemala. Franco settles. Pratt wants the screen serve. He'll get it. I've had a lot of screen serves this week, I have to say. Talking this morning to the Dominican head coach, Ricardo Monroy, who was a former Bolivian international player representing his country. Last time, I think, was 2010. And we were discussing the screen serve and, and how a screen serve shouldn't, shouldn't hinder the receiver. 
And what I mean by that is sometimes a, a server hits a screen serve that's actually really bad. The receiver wants to attack it, and the referee calls a screen serve. Allow that receiver to take that shot. Don't punish the receiver for a bad serve by the server. Of course, if the receiver you know, appeals for that, raises their arm, something to that nature, asking for that screen serve, and it does appear to be a screen serve, fine, call it. Otherwise, let it go and let them take the shot they want. Great defense from Pratt. Look how it died in the backcourt. Yeah, we've seen that shot a couple times now from Pratt as he was really trying to force Sebastian Franco all the way in the back of the court. And it's worked a couple times. The further you are away from the front wall, the harder it is to win that rally. That's right. Franco right in the middle of the court. Huge skip. Twelve eight. Charlie Pratt leading. That's one of the ones he wants back. He was right in the middle, had everything available. But he went for too much. Oh, wow. what a return from Franco. Pratt went for the jam serve, but it was short into the front rather behind rather than behind the body of Franco, allowing him to really attack that return. Eight serving twelve. Snap of the wrist on that backhand side for another winner. Side out. 12 serving eight. Oh, what a shot from Pratt. Now we see some emotion diving forward with that forehand winner. Love to see that kind of commitment here from these players. We'll see them diving all over these courts. And that's why we have Francesco, who has been doing a fantastic job here at San Jose Indoor Club. They have been an outstanding host, really making sure that these courts are clean and safe for our players. They've been a most gracious host, and we thank the Costa Rican Racquetball Association for that. Six courts at the Indoor Club, two of them with white floors. Never seen anything like it. Oh my goodness, that's too good from the American. Brings up game point. This would put Charlie Pratt at game point right now with a diving knees get from Franco and Pratt just overpowering that one. 14-8. Seen very few errors in this match. Both players hitting extremely well. Franco's going to take his second and final timeout. Well, while we're here, uh, let's talk a little bit about the IRF, Laura. We always look towards the Olympics and how we can involve racquetball in that tremendous event. Of course, the Olympics will be held in LA in 2028, which gives the IRF an opportunity to get racquetball in those Olympics. We have a fundraising committee that is working towards that goal. Um, you can find out more information about that on our website, internationalracquetball.com. You can make a donation, make a contribution, even sponsor the IRF if you have a business or something of that nature. Um, these things are, are long-term goals and they take tremendous amounts of work in negotiating with other organizations and other countries and even other sports sometimes to try and see this happen. It's, it's not just a simple 
um, a simple thing. It, it, it really takes a lot of work and time and effort. And of course, let's face it, it takes money. So. Um, and a lot of times it's the stuff that happens behind the scenes, right? That we might not hear about, that we don't see. And, and that's what a donation helps kind of support that mission. And we should mention that, that the IRF is an, a 501c3, a nonprofit organization, so donations are tax deductible. Here we go, game point number one. And that was loose from Franco on that return. No change from Pratt, he stays in control. Takes the first, 15-8. We'll be back in just a few moments with more of our IRF World Championships. This is the semifinals. We'll be going into game two when we come back. Gearbox leather sticks to my hand like it is my skin. The best feeling in the world, you pull that thing out of the package and you can kind of just feel it still molded in, into the way they packaged it. It's honestly, is one of the best feelings ever. You put the new glove and you're like, I got this. It's so light and so like comfortable that I feel like I'm playing with, with my bare hand. The grip is a lot better, so I love having new gloves. Welcome back everyone. This is game two of our International Racquetball Federation World Championships. Sebastian Franco serving for Colombia to Charlie Pratt from USA. Side out for Pratt. Charlie Pratt winning game one 15-8. Franco has to do something different. I'd like to see him stick down the forehand side a little more. Battle of the ceiling ball here. Sebastian Franco will be the first to swing. And you can see why, Laura. There were no mistakes from Pratt on that back end. Went to the ceiling, was patient. Hit two shots, two offensive shots, both of them very clean straight down the line. And that's the thing that we've seen so far in this match is that both players are playing really clean. We haven't seen too many skips. There's a low number of errors from both players. They're just playing really solid racquetball. Better wow. from Franco attacking that. I like the aggression. I feel like he has to really Push the pace against Pratt. Pratt just squeezing the ball to make sure it's not broken. Only way to test whether a ball's broken, Franco sets up to serve. Been drive serving to the left. We'll see if he continues. Should be a replay. Oh, 
He hit it, said Charlie Pratt. Doesn't matter. Franco could have hit it, I think, a little harder, but Pratt was impeding his view. Skip from yep. Pratt, leaning backwards. Franco has to keep the pressure on. Franco's first point, it's 1-1 now. Sticking with the serve on the left side. Oh wow, great serve. Catching Pratt unaware. Franco usually hits the Z to the left. That's a free point for the Colombian. Much better three-shot rally. Different look in this second game. from Franco. Looks to his coach, Gutierrez, who tells him, you need to go down the line on those. A good start for the Colombian in this second game. Seems to have started much more brightly. Pratt serves from this spot the entire first game. We'll get the setup. What's the call? It looked like it was an odd bounce off the back. This could be an avoidable hinder. So I think what our official Martel was saying, the ball actually hit the, the crack between the door and the wall. Created an odd bounce. I don't know. You can make up your own minds. So they that's maybe a court hinder they're saying? A court hinder replay for serve. In this situation, I, I sounds like a broken to, ball. I have to agree with Pratt. Franco, you know, he's wearing that dark shirt, standing right in the way as that ball came off the back wall. Uh, you can you can be charged with an avoidable hinder for basically trying to obscure the ball from your opponent. So they did just have a broken ball too. So they exchanged that out. A ball broke on Pratt's serve. Here we go. It's one serving four. Excellent ceiling ball from Franco. Just as good from Pratt. Franco went for the winner, didn't put it down. Straight down the line on the forehand side from the American. Oh, that ball. Just went guiding right in. He can't do it any better. Flat roll out. Good shot, says his opponent. Nice to see the respect, Laura, between these two. It's all business. They appreciate each other's efforts. Well, Pratt will appeal the screen. He's not going to win this. Both line judges agree. I mean, look where that ball hit, right in the corner. Because Franco is outside of those two rectangles, he's completely entitled to hit behind him. Five serving two. A rare skip from Pratt. Timeout USA. That's their first of this second game. 
I think that's a good timeout for USA. Things are maybe running away a little bit. It's been a really strong start for Sebastian Franco. He's leading right now 6-2. He had a 4-1 lead earlier. These guys are fighting now for a spot in the finals of our World Championship, which will be live streaming all day tomorrow. And we already know that Rodrigo Montoya from Mexico defeated David Horn earlier today. So he will be a finalist tomorrow. And we're waiting to find out if it will be Charlie Pratt or Sebastian Franco. Charlie Pratt winning game one, 15-8. But he's now down as Sebastian Franco leads 6-2 in game two. Should also mention we've had two other semifinals this morning. Earlier, Paola Longoria defeated Maria Jose Vargas. Mexico over Argentina. That was a tiebreaker win yep. for Longoria. 11-7. She lost the first and came back to win game two and the tiebreaker. And then Guatemalan Ana Gabriela Martinez defeated Argentine Natalia Mendez in two straight games. So that'll be a final that's a repeat from 2016. Longoria won that one in two straight. We'll see if she can do it again. Another skip from Charlie Pratt. I thought, Not the short, I thought the serve was short. I think we might have an appeal. And indeed it was short. Both line judges overturned the call of our head official Jaime Martel. So it'll be a re, uh, second serve coming up. Puts the score back at 6-2. Great pickup from Franco. Oh, great effort. Charlie Pratt scrambles to stay in it. What a rally. It's still going, Pratt. Oh, my goodness. Good shot called, I think, by our official. I, well, he put his thumb up. He stepped on my foot, says Franco. Well, Jaime Martel put up his, his thumb. Uh, and he indicating gave a point. It was a good shot. But it was Pratt who hit the shot. So, point for Columbia either way, 7-2. 7 7-2, on. that's what we know. Replay. Apology from Franco who hits his opponent. Just trying to keep the ball alive. Side out for Charlie Pratt. He's down right now, 2-7 in game two, winning game one, 15-8. We are at the 19th World Championships of Racquetball in Costa Rica. We are in San Jose. San Jose Indoor Club has been an awesome host for this event so far this week. Couple of ceiling balls here as these guys use their patience. Oh, and Charlie Pratt skipping again. We've seen a couple skips from the Team USA member. I think that's three on the backhand side in this second game. Played very, very clean on that side in game one. But some errors creeping in. Seven serving two. I'm not sure what Pratt wants. Franco skips it. 
above his shoulder. Went for the low percentage. Skip ball. Two seven. Perfect shot from Franco. Franco's changed his serve position in this second game, and that seems to have helped him. He can hit from here to the left and right. But that's too good. That time from Pratt, cracks one down the left side. This is tough. We haven't seen much movement here in the points after several rallies. Looks like Columbia calling a timeout. Is that correct? Well, we also want to talk about a tournament we have coming up courtesy of Two IRF legends, Gustavo Farrell is the director of the officials here at the World Championships and also Hall of Famer Gary Mazaroff, who's running our senior World Championships in uh, just over a week. Uh, I hope you can come to this event. It's the second one down in El Paso, Texas. So if you're in that area, there's going to be players coming up from Juarez and Chihuahua. Uh, the likes of Montoya, who's going to be in our final tomorrow. Uh, Alex Landa won it last year. Apollo Gutierrez, all of those guys will be coming up to play. Laura, a great event to not only watch some of these professionals, but maybe even have a chance to play them. How about that? I played potentially the world champion in October, two months after he won it. And it's a great story for a lot of us. And a great experience. And I'm telling you, for those of you who have never seen any of these guys live, you have to. I really encourage you, if you're in the area, to get out there to this event October 25th to the 28th because watching the caliber of players that will be at this event, like Polo Gutierrez, Alex Cardona, Alex Landa, who won last year, Rodrigo Montoya, when you see them live, it's even faster than you believed. It really is. And uh, I should also mention those world seniors if you're 35 or older. Oh, because you're talking about speed? <laughs> <laughs> Had to. I, I'm not going to comment on that one. <laughs> I will say the ball is very quick at 7,000 feet elevation. Um, it, it does get wild and crazy over the course of five days of round robin competition. If you're 35 and older, up to 95, join us. It's a lot of fun. Gary runs a great tournament. Well, side out and side out out here in game two as Charlie Pratt now steps back into the service box. 2-7 in game two. Nobody scored after that timeout called by Franco. Second serve. Another skip from Pratt. That's the difference in this second game, making some of those errors. Played incredibly clean in game one. Excellent racquetball, but some errors have come in. Franco changed position on his drive service, had some better looks. It's seven serving two. Back and forth we go in the second game. Oh my goodness, he got it. Avoidable, Avoidable. hinder. I don't know. That was close. I think Franco's looking back at his coach asking if he should appeal. It's 
still at 7-2, I think that really just speaks to the talent of these players, especially when we get to a point like this at the World Championships, the semifinals. There will be no quick games from here on out, as we well know. We started streaming today at 10 a.m. Mountain Time. We've seen tiebreakers. We've seen two-hour matches because these players are so good and so evenly matched. And I know you love this, Tim, but anything can happen because we have such high-level players playing against each other who they normally don't see each other. Maybe they meet in other aspects, but you're now on the world stage. You're absolutely right. I mean, yesterday we had three quarterfinals lasting six hours, and we're hitting the five-hour mark here, and we're in match number four. Great action, great competition. Hope you appreciate all the IRF is doing to get these streams out, get these feeds out, provide photos for journalists, and we've seen some of those articles coming out around the world uh, in, in different countries. It's been a lot of fun to see. Come on, says Pratt quietly to himself. He earns a point. It's three serving seven. Yeah, we got some movement now on the board. Switches it up to a forehand serve. Earns another point, four serving seven. A little bit of surprise on that serve. Pays off for Charlie Pratt. Great serve, Franco wants short. Doesn't get it. Pratt might appeal the short serve, but looks and asks if he should. No, says his contingent. That's the value of having friends, family, coaches there to provide a second pair of eyes. Well, that ball skips. Side out for Charlie Pratt. Four serving seven. Tough rally as Pratt earns his fifth point. Looks like there's some discussion down on the court. They have Gustavo Farrell, who is the head officiating ref. Maybe they were asking for a clarification on rules. So I think you can it's hear. what it is, is it's an equipment timeout. They were asking whether, I think Franco oh. was asking whether he's allowed to change his glove without taking a timeout. Um, that's, a, that's a tricky one. Gray area? Yeah, it really is. If a player dives, for example, and tears a glove, then they're definitely entitled to change that glove because it's an equipment failure. But if the glove is wet, is, is that really a defective glove? Or is it just because the player needs to change it uh, because they want to? So it's, it's one of those sticky areas, and it looks like we just, yep, let's just give him a glove. Let's just get on with the match. So here we go. Pratt starting to come back into this. Six serving seven. It'll be a second serve for Charlie Pratt. Nice get from Sebastian Franco. Oh, oh, goodness. Oh, what a great rally. Terrific effort from both players. Wow. Let's take a look back at that. These guys just hitting that ball so low and making some amazing gets. These 
players committing everything in this match. It's great to see. We have that view from the front too. Look at these diving efforts. Oh, and that ball pegging Charlie Pratt in the back. Terrific rally, Pratt wants two bounces. Oh, not that time, Franco. Tries to guide it into the front right corner. Another highlight reel from these two players. wipe of the court. Just a reminder, we have a couple more matches coming up for you on this court number one here in San Jose, Costa Rica. So many matches we provided with you all week. Reminder, we'll try to get these up very quickly after this tournament on our YouTube channel. Just go to internationalracquetball.com or YouTube, International Racquetball Federation. We have playlists there for you to watch and enjoy. Tough from Franco. Side out. It was 7-2. It's now 7-6. He needs some points. Starts with a good serve. Second serve for Sebastian Franco. Still leading 7-6. Plunging effort from Pratt on the right side, frustrated with himself. Shaking his head. A point for Franco. Little nod of his head back to his head coach, Gutierrez. Some of these players have had a lot of matches this summer. The IRF was involved in some multi-sport events this summer. Bolivarianos games included racquetball. The South American games included racquetball and the Central American Caribbean games included racquetball. Wow, that was close. So some of these players have spent a lot of time on courts this summer. Franco being one of them who slips on the floor. Great shot from Charlie Pratt. Edges closer to a place in the final. Serving eight. This 
smart hitting from Pratt. Hit the jam serve, Franco kept it up. Pratt goes cross court to the left side. Takes the lead in this second game for the first time. 75 minutes into this match, Franco looks over to our tablet on the left, checks the score. One of the great things the IRF introduced a couple of years ago were those tablets that connect to the scoreboard so everybody here can see who's playing, the score, what country they're from, number of appeals, timeouts, etc. Players struggling to stay on their feet right now. Long rally. Flat rolls it, Charlie Pratt. Another point, 10-8. This is incredible because he was down at least at 2-7 earlier in this game. Really showing some maturity and patience. We haven't seen him lose control. He hasn't lost his cool. He's kept it totally professional out there. And to Franco's point, you know, he also has as well. He's been battling it out. He's trying to keep up in game two and come back with a victory. Pratt winning game one, 15-8. Both of these players are very, very experienced. They've come back from deficits before. Franco had to do it yesterday in his tiebreaker win over De La Rosa from Mexico. We'll have a new world champion this year for the first time since 2008. Consistently won by Rocky Carson. Five times in a row, the American. Oh, that ball just passed Pratt. We're getting a lot of wet courts. Might be time to change those jerseys, our official Jaime Martel. And, and well, on cue. Is that exactly? Oh, no, maybe not. I guess not. There was a discussion about it. Officials can request a change at any time to help speed up the match. Of course, some courts, Laura, don't have this varnished finish on the floor. We were at the World Championships in Cali, Colombia in 2016. A lot of sweat, but it just got absorbed into the court. The disadvantage of those courts, of course, is they're much rougher, and so diving can cause a lot of bruising and, 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 and pain. True, yeah, that's a, that's a negative side effect. It's, yeah, it's one of those judgments, right? Um, there was players a can sorry. wear knee pads, of course. There was a point there for Sebastian Franco. He's closing that gap. Side out now for Charlie Pratt. It's 10 serving nine. Puts Charlie Pratt at 11-9. Pratt wants the replay. I don't think he's going to get it. I could have got that ball, he said. Our official says, no, I don't think so. Nine serving 11. Franco staying on the left side. Pratt. Oh, great pickup, Franco. Pratt again. Oh my goodness, terrific defense from the Colombian. But that time, too good from the American. Hits it down the right side. Side out, 11-9, back and forth we go. What a long match this has turned out to be as well. These guys are battling for a spot in the finals, looking to take on Rodrigo Montoya from Mexico tomorrow in the men's singles final. Just a reminder, these players have appeals available. Pratt has two remaining, Franco three. 
they're not happy with a call, they are entitled to appeal to the line judges. Forehand power from Franco. Laura, this second game has been back and forth for so long. It has, it's really, really tough. Requires it's such mental strength to stay in this and focus on the next point. It's been hard for these guys to score points. We haven't seen a bunch of runs that we normally see in racquetball. They've been slow and few between. But that's because they're so closely matched. Well, all of a sudden we hear some Animation from Franco talking to himself. Why? He hit a great serve. Pratt got it deep. Franco went for too much. Skips the ball. Another side out. Pratt just four points away from a final. Oh, what a get. Not that time, Charlie Pratt. <laughs> you can see his emotion. He's giving everything in this match. Take a look back at that replay. Pratt diving get. And Sebastian Franco just has that whole right side of the court open to his advantage. He did well to keep his cool. He knew Pratt was you know, scrambling to get up and sometimes it's easy to, to kind of lose focus on what you're trying to do, recognizing what's going on behind you. He kept his composure, put the ball down. Looks like there's still some fluid on the court. We'll get that taken care of and we'll be back on at, we're now an hour and 20 minutes into this match, still in game number two. Back and forth we go. We saw it yesterday as well in our quarterfinals. Once you reach the quarterfinals, it's anybody's match. They're all quality players and it makes these matches very, very close. Another surprising skip from Pratt. That puts Franco now at 10-11. Beautiful from Franco. Let's go, he says. All tied up, 11-11. Pratt takes a timeout. Insane. 11-11, Franco just really doing a good job, not letting this pressure get to him and staying competitive in game two. Remember, Charlie Pratt won game one, 15-8. Sebastian Franco has been leading for most of this match, uh, excuse me, most of game two. Charlie Pratt came back from 2-7, brought himself up to, I don't know, he went past tying. I think he got to 10-7. He was in the lead. Before um, Franco, Franco now able to kind to of, you know, up. yeah, pick one point at a time and bring us to 11-11. And I like the timeout from Pratt. Doesn't want to get let this get carried away. Maybe feels a little fatigue. They've been on the court a long time. We, we have to mention how hot and humid it gets here on court number one in the indoor club. Six courts, great facility. Great story behind behind how these courts were made. Oh yeah. Of course, uh, originally designed for squash, and the uh, either the builder or the architect just got it wrong and built racquetball courts instead, which is why we have racquetball in Costa Rica. And when I say we have racquetball in Costa Rica, we really have a lot. There's now there's two clubs in San Jose with courts, two juniors programs. They bring a great contingent to World Juniors, and they've developed some quality players including, of course, Felipe Camacho, who plays professionally, and also Andres Acuna, who competed very hard this week against Moscoso. What a serve. Switches it up to the forehand and gets the ace. That's just one of those things 
That is such a surprising element. We've seen Sebastian Franco really attacking, both players actually, attacking each other's backhand. That switch up pays off, puts Franco at 12-11. Three points away from a tiebreaker, Franco. What a get. Not that time, Pratt. Vamos, says Franco. Two points away from a tiebreaker. You can tell this means so much to him. 13-11 now for Sebastian Franco. We've mentioned it already, Laura. We, it's, it's been great to watch these two really compete hard, but there's a lot of respect for the opponent. Great testament to the support, giving every, uh, the sport, giving everything these two, uh, but congratulating each other with good shots and so on. It's, it's nice to see. Oh, that's nice from Charlie Pratt, side out. There's a great example. Franco turns around, good shot, he says. Like to see that kind of camaraderie out on the court, too. Pratt now with a chance to close this gap that Sebastian has, 11-13. Rally again, Franco. Flat rolls it. Another fist pump, he's suddenly become more emotional. He's been very controlled the entire match. Suddenly realizes how close he is to this tiebreaker. 13-11, back and forth we go. 18 countries here at the World Championships. Of course, we see many regulars, but also some, some countries we don't normally see in tournaments at the IRF stream from Asia and Europe. We appreciate the effort they've made to travel here. It's, it's a long journey for many of them, and they've been uh, very competitive and given everything representing their country. 13-11, Sebastian Franco serving, looking to take this to a tiebreaker. Pratt right in the middle. He gets it. Oh, not that time. Pratt contain, maintains his composure after the terrific get from Franco. These players hitting the floor almost every rally. We do have doubles that will be streaming later today. We'll be streaming women's doubles and men's doubles. On the women's side, we have Guatemala versus Bolivia. And on the men's side, Mexico versus Bolivia. Wow. Hits the crack. Just pops out. 12 serving 13. Some emotion from Pratt this time. Second serve for Charlie Pratt. It's a great Nick Lobb. Franco skipped it. He has a timeout remaining. Charlie Pratt two points away from this match. Franco will take his second. And final time out. I'm on the edge of my seat, Tim. It's 13-13 in game two. Charlie Pratt winning game one, 15-8. It's anyone's bet. 
Now who's going to take away this win? Is Sebastian Franco going to pull out this side out and two points to then take us to a tiebreaker? Or will Charlie Pratt be the first to get to 15 in this match and send himself to the finals? Well, it's a game of momentums for sure, and, and I like this timeout from Franco. Pratt had won two points in a row, had the momentum, seemed to be finding his form with good serving. He knows he's two points away, and he needs to forget that right now. He just needs to focus on executing the next rally. Forget where you are, what the occasion is, how close you are to a final. Franco needs to do the same. Here we go. Charlie Pratt will serve. Oh, what a serve. Wow. That's going to put Charlie Pratt now at match point. It started with a serve. It was a bullet. Franco plunging to his left just to save it. He did. What match makes point. it so exciting, too, is that Sebastian Franco led for a lot of game two. Yeah, he was up 7-2 and just seemed to have found his zone. And then one by one, point by point, Charlie Pratt pulled it back, took a lead, and then it was Franco who took the 13-11 lead. Now three points a row, in a row for the American. He is one point away from a final at the World Championships. Second serve, just to keep us on the edge of our seats here. Everybody holding their breath right now. Another great Nick Lobb, Franco to the ceiling. Pratt will shoot this. What a get. No, he skips it. What a match between these two players. Charlie Pratt, great effort from both, but he takes it, advances to the final, 15-8, 15-13. See if we got that on the replay. Final points here. Charlie Pratt moving on to the finals. He'll be playing tomorrow against Rodrigo Montoya from Mexico. Look at all that emotion as Charlie Pratt pulls out the victory 15-8, 15-13. We'd like to thank you all for watching this streaming of the 19th World Championships of Racquetball here in Costa Rica. We'll be taking a break before we get moving on to our next match, which is women's doubles, Guatemala versus Bolivia. So make sure you come back and join us for that. Thank you, everyone, for watching.